Good evening. It's about 10 p.m. on a Saturday night. I'm home alone and out in the shop. And uh, excuse me if I sound a little funny. Allergies uh, bother me and uh, got a little sniffles. But we got some fluke multimeters. And here on the top we have a pair of uh, 8010A. 8010A and here on the bottom we have an 8520A now I have the two uh, 8010s fired up and uh, one thing about these meters is a lot of times the displays go dim on them as you can see that one is very bright and looks good and the other one is also very bright and looks good so no problem with the displays I didn't check both of the meters out they seem to work pretty good pretty much bang on no problems at all I checked them on both ohms AC and DC I have not checked milliamps because uh, as funny as it seems both meters came in missing the uh, two amp fuse connectors I thought that was kind of strange but it is what it is I guess a friend of mine bought all this off of eBay I don't think it was I know these two were from one person this here was from another I'm not sure if both of these were from the same person or not but uh, I ended up acquiring these today so more fun stuff to work on um, this one is missing as you can see on the side it's got a little bezel that sticks out this side has been cut off and someone's painted it black around there I don't know why they done that maybe they burn it with a solder and iron and, and just cut it off smooth or Maybe they're trying to view it from an angle and that was in the way, so they cut it off. No idea. No idea at all. But anyway, the 8520A is the one I was really interested in. Um, and the reason for that is that you can uh, put on a set of Kelvin clips and connect it up here and go either two wire or four wire and when I saw that and he told me about them that's why I was interested in acquiring this meter now all this equipment was supposed to be working but like eBay um, you go on and, and buy something you're taking a chance so uh, I'm going to turn these two off that's one way you save the displays is only turn them on when you need them and we'll fire up the 8520A and you'll see it goes through the self test finding everything good till we get here here on the display it's showing minus 116.706 and you cannot get out of this mode I mean you can change you know DC to AC uh, auto ranging program uh, selection program data all that will come up and work but when you go here to two wire or four wire you get error 01 and per the manual error 01 says high voltage on the inputs so you know on this meter you got your inputs on the front you switch it and you got two inputs on the back so there is a problem with high voltage on the inputs so uh, the only thing I know to do is tear this thing apart and see if I can find anything that's wrong I don't know if somebody's overloaded the front end and has took something out or if it's a software issue 
but uh, it kind of, you know, I tried to read voltage on the front connection and the back connection, and you can't can't get no reading on the meter whatsoever as far as uh, any voltage test, or you can't even get two resistance tests. So something has gone wrong, and I'm thinking, you know, it's with the input output section, and uh, I'm gonna have to look at that, look at the DC buffer stage. I have personally never been into one of these. In fact, this is the first time I've even had a multimeter like this in front of me. So, you know, I still got a lot to learn on these things myself. But, you know, like any other piece of test equipment, you got to tear it down and find out what's going on. So let's pull it apart and see if we can see anything. I have the top and bottom covers off. If you notice, the whole main board is shielded on the top. Um, we got our power supply here and our associated power supply circuits. And over here we have our control unit. This connects to the front panel and displays. And all your controlling is done over here. Um, the first thing I noticed when I took this off, there's three EPROMs. These look like 2764 series. And uh, under these EPROMs, a little window. Well, both these tabs that's covering the windows have fell off and just laying inside. And I can't find this one. I don't know if it's maybe up under the power supply or where. But, uh, you know, these chips are erased by ultraviolet light. So I stuck the uh, labels back on and put just a little piece of gray tape over this one. Just to keep any light from getting into it. Because we definitely don't want um, any light getting there and erasing our chips. I don't know if you could even obtain these chips anymore. But, uh, you know, you could get another unit and read it and copy it over to a chip. And for those of you playing at home, um, one important thing high voltage be very careful um, this cover associated sheet metal and the circuitry within may present up to a thousand volt shock hazard so be very careful when messing around inside of uh, a piece of equipment like this um, everything looks pretty much well shielded um, but still you know there's always a chance of shock hazard so to get in here to the I.O. board, and the, you know, to look at the inputs, this cover is going to have to come off. And uh, looks like there's only four screws holding it on, so we'll take that off right quick. Alright, now we should be able to lift up. And take the cover off. Whoa. Okay, I just noticed something. Does that tell you anything? Yeah, it's a burnt spot on the inside of the cover on the top. Look at here, that's right here in this location. Let's get a look at that and see what that is. All right, so the area we're looking in, this is your I.O. logic part of the board here. And this is your buffer logic, or your DC buffer. And I'm looking right here, and I'll zoom in on that a little bit. And as you can see, the burnt spot right there on this uh, chip connector. And there's two resistors here. And both of these resistors is raised up off the board about three quarters of an inch. And that one is blown in two. Yep. That is R255.
Now, I would say these have been replaced by somebody because every other resistor on the board is all the way down, flush with the board. But these two has been raised up. And looking at it, the uh, solder looks a, bit, a little bit different than the rest of the board. So we need to find out what R255 and 257 is. Now I'm looking at the two resistors below it and both of them have burnt spots on it. But you know that really has to be a flame because you're talking about what two inches to the top cover here and it blacked out the top cover as you saw but if you notice the board is not not charred or fried but the top of those two resistors has been a little hot and that's just charring on them from whatever burn up before I'm just going to take a little isopropyl and see if that will clean off make sure that those two is not burnt into yeah I think they look okay that was just flashpoint from whatever burn up before which had to be the two original resistors that was there. Anyway, I'm going to have to go to the schematic and see if I can find R255 and 257 and see what's going on there. One other thing I want you to notice is that all these are tantalum capacitors. And there's quite a few of them in this circuit. So we know the deal on tantalum capacitors and what can happen to them. Uh, tantalum capacitors very seldom fail out, of, you know, fall out of spec. They either good or they go short. And if they go short, something like this resistor would be the weakest link and would take it out. So, you know, I do have a suspicion of what caused these resistors to go. All right, so what we're going to do is test these two resistors it's R257 and 255 well these are 15 ohm resistors and I'm hoping I can test them in circuit Okay, I've looked at the uh, service manual and R2, uh, 255 and 257 are 15-ohm resistors. So let's get a check on these and see what we come up with. I think we can check them in circuit by looking at the schematic. Okay, that's R257 and it looks okay visually and it's showing 15.1 ohms now the other one that doesn't look too good is R255 so let's test it it should be 15 ohms and it's showing about 7.47k so that one is definitely bad So to get to the bottom side of the board, we got another shield that we got to remove. And you can see there's six screws around it. But you look here and you'll see two uh, riveted, uh, threaded rivets in here. So before you go trying to yank this out, it's always good to check those to see what it is. And when we look on the other side, there's actually a screw here. And there's a screw here, so they'll need to come out.
All right, I'll go ahead and get all the screws out of the back and get that cover off. So this is the bottom of the circuit board and right here is where these resistors are. And you can see all the uh, leads here on that row of resistors on both sides. If you notice the factory resistors are pointing that way. The two resistors in question, the leads, are pointing the opposite way. That's a good indication that they have been replaced before. So this problem has uh, already been looked at and worked on and was not satisfied. So I got my two new resistors prepared to go in and I decided to just leave them up off the board but I put V notches in the resistors this way the V will sit down on the board and it'll sort of from underneath and by doing it this way if it gets hot and starts to burn the resistor will not sink down into the board it'll have a, a firm spot to hold on to okay I've got all new resistors replaced on the uh, DC logic board so uh, we say we just fire it up and see what it does. Let's say we don't. Um, that resistor R255 suffered a major failure. Now resistors just don't burst into flames and burn up for no reason. So there's got to be something going on. There's either something on the output side of it is shorted and causing it or there's a problem in the voltage rail so what we need to do is go back here to the voltage rails and check our voltages back there so here we can have our look at our schematic diagram and this is off the the power supply and we have two bridge rectifiers here we have four regulators we have 27 volts positive 15 volts positive our ground rail we have minus 15 volts and minus 27 volts and it's very con convenient that they already have some test points here that we can check at so we can ground on TP705 and we'll check these voltage rails and see what we see so right here by our resistors we replace you can see an empty IC socket that is actually from this jumper I went ahead and removed this jumper and this way when I turn it on to check voltages we're not risk burning our resistors out again and causing any further damage this will isolate this section from the rest of the board so we only have the power supply running through okay so here we have our minus 15 volts negative And we'll turn it on. And I got negative 14.7. Right, we have our negative 27 volts. And we have 27.5. That looks good. Um, I think this is the That was 14 volts. Okay, there's minus 15 volts again. Well, here's our positive 27 volt rail. And as you can see, our positive 27 volts rail is about 10 volts higher than it needs to be. Now TP704, our positive 15 volt rail was a booger to find. And it's hidden way up here behind this uh, connector. And we'll check it. Turn the unit on, might help. 
and we had about 300 millivolts on our positive 15 volt rail so we have a problem with our positive 27 volt rail it's way high and our positive 15 volt rail is way low so we have to go back to the schematic and look at this okay so by taking our voltage readings we know that our negative voltage is checking out fine but our positive rails are wrong our 27 volts is at 37 volts and our positive 15 volts is in the millivolt range so we know there's something going on here in this section so we need to go in and check these components it's through here there's a couple of resistors these capacitors there's a diode here that comes from pin 3 of the 27 volt regulator and it goes down to pin 2 of the 15 volt regulator we also need to come over and check the uh, capacitors over here in the, in the supply let's move out the, the voltage here but, but we need to check these capacitors and there is also these 4.7 50 volt capacitors ok sorry about that so we're going to go in here and we're going to check these components um, we have a diode here from the uh, positive 15 volt rail down the ground a resistor there a capacitor here and again these are tantalum capacitors so we'll get in here and see what we can find out okay after doing a lot of testing of these parts I found that U704 is not a 27 volt regulator it is actually a LM 340T-12 which is basically a 12 volt regulator and as you see we had a lot going on between U705 and U704 and that derives the 27 volts now what I have found is that somewhere outside of this circuit we have a dead short on our positive 15 volt rail so I'm going to have to pull the rest of this schematic and trace this on out and see if we can find out where this dead short's at. I think it's going to be somewhere around the uh, DC buffer or somewhere in that location. So that you can see I have the 15 volt regulator removed. I got this resistor stuck into output pin. These, just, these regulators just plug into a socket and then bolt to the chassis and I got it on ohm scale and when we check it and it's completely zero we go to diode check and it's zero all the way across so there's definitely a dead short on that 15 volt rail so now that we looked at our power supply rail we already know that the uh, the issue with the voltage regulators is down on this end so what we need to do now is look at these capacitors right here these tandem capacitors and I'm pretty sure since it's burning up this one resistor that one of these capacitors is probably causing the problem and since we're having a problem with our 27 volt positive and 15 volt positive rails we probably need to check these two capacitors right here but now don't let uh, the negative 27 volt even though it was good on the supply we also need to check that capacitor so we'll look at these and see what we find so since this is our resistor that was giving us a problem we follow right down we see the trace going right to this first capacitor here this is the capacitor I'm suspecting it's going to be bad and when I ohm out from ground to this end of the resistor I'm getting a complete zero it's a dead short there so we're going to pull out this capacitor so we got our test lead probes across the capacitor and as you can see it's complete zeros And just a verification for you analog junkies. But 
boom, complete short. Yep, that tantalum has uh, gone short on us. So we have our new tantalum capacitor installed and we'll check and make sure. Yep, and we are up into mega ohms. No more short ground there. However, when I come back here and check the positive output of the uh, 15 volt positive voltage regulator we have still have a dead short there now I pulled the regulator and I got a lead stuck in there so I can test it right down the pin of the output and yeah there's a dead short to ground so we still have something on that uh, 15 volt positive output rail that is shorted to ground Okay, well since we have this dead short on our 15 volt um, rail, um, I'm going to show you how we're going to go about locating this. Now I have the uh, multimeter set, and you see it's 0.1 of a known. And what we're going to do is go in here and start removing these jumpers that's in here and see if this changes. And if it does, then we know that'll help pinpoint the area of where our short is at. Um, it makes it nice that they put these jumpers in here. It helps you isolate what the problem is. Okay. I removed that one and as you see we're still at a short that was J22 so I'm gonna come here to J21 and remove it oh and our short has gone away so I can put J22 back in Yep, so see, we're up in the K ohms now. So, uh, definitely something going on right here on uh, J21. So, as you can see here on our schematic, this is J21, and this is several singles coming in. And right here is our positive 15 volt rail. And if, once we come off of pin 6 of J21, we see a tantalum capacitor here 10 microfarads it's C450 we also have another voltage regulator U407 which is an 8 volt regulator and then we have a diode CR412 so we might can expect something here in this area um, would it be the diode the regulator the tantalum capacitor or something further on down this rail my first guess would be C450 tantalum capacitor because we know what they do sorry about having the voltmeter upside down but I won't get all this in one shot this is J21 and we have pin 9 and pin 6 pin 9 is our power supply side and you can see we in the kilo ohm range but when we go to pin 6, boom, dead short. So we now we know that the problem lies in this board right here. So the first thing we get to, I was telling you, C450, it's right here, and it's a tantalum cap, and it's right beside this voltage regulator. So I'm going to remove this tantalum cap, and we see if our short goes away. All right, the cap has been moved. We'll go back to pin six and we'll check. 
and now we're reading in the kilohm range. So again, another tantalum capacitor that has failed. So looking through my tantalum capacitors, I happen not to have a 10 at uh, 25 volts. So I put in an electrolytic temporary and we'll check now on pin 6 and see if our short is still there. I'm pretty sure it's not because the capacitor did check short. Okay, and we are reading in kilo ohms. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Alright, now in the moment of truth. What we're going to do is uh, turn the power on and we're going to check our 15 volt positive rail and we're going to do it on pin 6 of J21 and that will tell us if that part is now working. Power's on and we're now at 14.63 volts so that's taking care of the short there although when we go over here and we check our plus 27 volt we're still showing 40 volts on that and the input of our regulator is 40 volts and the output of our regulator is 40 volts so it looks like to me that that regulator is uh, shorted or something is causing it to short across it so I expected this uh, LM 340T-12 to be bad so I went ahead and replaced it and what we want to do now is check our positive 27 volt rail that is a 12 volt regulator and it used conjunction with the 15 volt regulator and the 12 volt regulator to produce the 27 volts so we're going to go here on our 27 volt test point Turn the unit on and we now have 27.12 volts we go back to our 15 volt rail yep it still reads 14.63 but that's close enough so it looks like we are getting somewhere all right okay we went through quite a bit to get this far and the next thing is, you know, will we go through, boot up, and not have any error codes? And most of all, will we have anything, any voltage showing on the screen? So let's turn it on and see what we get. Yep, and unfortunately, you see it showing plus 38.7 volts. So we still have voltage on the input. And as you see, if we go into select volts AC, it still should show in 44 volts. If we go to two wire, we come up with error one. And same thing on four wire, we're going to come up with error one. That's telling us that there's still voltage on the input. So it looks like there's some more tantalum capacitors that has gone bad in this unit. And at this point, probably the best thing to do is go ahead and order all new tantalum capacitors and replace all of them. And go ahead and get all them old ones out of there. So now that we got all our power supply rails are working pretty good, I decided to go back here on the buffer logic area and pull the jumper back out on J19 because you know this is where our main problem was was in this area to start with and I have pulled the jumper out so we're going to turn the unit on and see what kind of errors we get then okay let's cross our fingers and see what happens uh, you're seeing this as I'm seeing it at the moment this is just a thought I had boom look at that 0 0.00 volts DC 0 0.0 volts AC now we're going to hit the 2 wire ohm setting 
boom there we go and our four wire ohm setting so I'm going to have to get in there and shoot around look at some more of them tantalum capacitors and see if there's anything in there that's uh, causing the errors but it's good to see those lights come on <laughs> yeah, I feel like we have uh, made us some good progress now so we're looking at the error code table in the service manual if we see if we had a zero zero blank display would be no errors but we are showing error 01 HV and all it says is high voltage presence with own function selected uh, unfortunately it doesn't give us any more information on what to look for it just gives us an explanation of what it is so you know the next thing we got to do is figure out just what error 01 high voltage is so again with uh, J19 plugged in we turn the unit on it goes through this pass but see we're showing voltage and if we reach over here and select anything in the ohms range we go to that error 01 okay but with J19 out we'll turn it on and we get zero which means no errors and then when we hit our two and four wire we'll get our own reading now the bad thing about this you know the meter will not function um, you cannot read nothing or use any other functions on it to test uh, voltage or ohms or anything so I'm going to have to look into the schematic and trace out all the pins on J19 and see what kind of signals is going through them and, and just what's you know going on in that area so we spent quite a few time on this um, I'm on day two of it finishing up for today and uh, it'll probably be next week before I get a chance to get back on it or either the week after so I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this part of the video as part one and uh, I'm gonna have to do some research and man there's a lot of stuff to go through on the manual for self test so a lot of troubleshooting involved in it so we got to find out what's going on with our logic there's definitely something in there is causing a problem but as you know always finding the uh, the issue isn't always as easy so you know I feel like uh, we fixed the results of the issue um, my guess is somebody's put something into the front end that um, caused some problems uh, could be those tantalum capacitors don't help at all so you know we still got a lot of uh, tantalums in there that needs to be replaced I'm sure so in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and get an order up together and see can I get these tantalums replaced so if you have any comments you know always feel free to leave them in the below you know if you've had one of these and you're working on it I am open for ideas so uh, anyway We'll conclude this in as part one and we'll see you next time.